is sitting in Aliceville, Alabama, interviewing blues legend Willie King. Willie King is a man that speaks the truth through his music. What I love most about Willie, he's a grassroots organizer, and he don't forget where he come. He haven't forgotten where he come from. What really got my attention with Willie is the cotton fields because I studied a period of sharecroppers, and Willie have never forgotten the struggles of working in that cotton field. So let's welcome this very special man who's known throughout the world. Willie King, welcome Willie. It's a pleasure. Thank you. It's thank a pleasure. Y'all. Uh, thank y'all for coming and visiting with us. It just makes me feel good to know someone care about us. Come and see about us. Willie, you've been all over the world. You've been yes. to Paris, you've been to Rome, oh, you've yeah. been to Italy. Oh, yeah. But you always find yourself back in this very remote, remote place in the rural, deep areas that you really can't find without somebody really helping you to get back here. Right. Why? Well, I just feel comfort here. I feel just my people, just where I grew up at, just where I was born. I feel this is part of my root here from Africa to here. It's part of my root. And I just love the people that I'm around and I love to help, trying to help the people that I'm around every day. So you help them by giving food and clothing and paying light bills? Helping me we give, give food, clothing, paying light bills, and sometimes we have to pay uh, the house note for people. So they can't make it. I have a little check that they get. And a lot of them is laid off now. It's not working. Had a job, but they got laid off, so that makes it a little harder. Old family, and a lot of them got little children. And this is what I'm really concerned about in the children. They need a chance to try to make something out of them themselves. They need a chance. Well, what type of future do they have, especially now with the economy being the way it is? Uh, what do you see for the future for the children here in rural areas like this? It's very, very, very slim for them to have a good, say, look, have a good future here. Yeah. We things are now, the jobs closed down, we have nothing coming in, just a little drip coming in, and that soon going out, bills and things, and this is what gets them on. We talk about the young people, but a lot of times the, the older peoples create trouble for the young peoples. Mm -hmm. Big, big, because this is what started a lot of them selling drugs, going out, selling drugs, just trying to make it because. They have no future, nothing else around here, no jobs, no thing. And they got to make it some kind of way. And this is what started a lot of them say, well, the young folks, they out there selling drugs. But well, a lot of times, the older people create that for the young people because we have nothing coming in, nothing for the young people to do. You know, I heard you say this earlier that, uh, and we talked about this, you hear of the, our elected officials and uh, the scholars talk about urban poverty, mm -hmm. but there's not much said about the rural poverty. No. You never hear people talk too much about the poor. They go as far as the middle class, but you never hear people speak about the poor people. And we got plenty all over the world, poor people. I mean, poor people. Was you a sharecropper, William? I was a sharecropper. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, sharecropping is no fun for anyone of mine coming up through sharecropping. It's supposed to be the boss man, every all the ex, all the experience, uh, all the money that we have to pay out. The boss man is supposed to pay half, and the sharecropper pay half, but it never works out that way. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year. Sure, the boss man will always tell you if you had made one more bail, you would have jumped the fence. You would have cleared some money. But in the meantime, you didn't make it out. You, you never make it out of debt. You're always in debt to the boss man. This was a way to have you for another year. You just go to just a cycle you go through. Yeah. So, how long did you, how long was your family share poppers? Oh, my family shared crop was terrible around 63, 64, when the Civil Rights Movement kind of broke out around 64, 65, down here. And people started giving away from 
Went to the cotton field, doing things for Bunny Boss Man. A lot of them had to move. People had to try to find, buy a little half acre land, what they could here and there, and move off the Boss Man place because he was putting off a lot of people off the place because we had stopped going to the cotton field around 64, 65. I heard you tell me something earlier about your mother having a. Uh... 1998 was the time that the first, first time, time she got a bathroom in the house. She ever had a 1988. 1988. Mm -hmm. And this is your mother here. Yeah, this is my Beautiful. mother. Beautiful. You look just like your mom. Thank you, ma'am. All right. So 1988 was the first time that she had a bathroom in her home? Mm-hmm. First time, 1988, that she ever had a, a bathroom in her home. And uh, we always had to go on the outside. You said a shack. You someone had to live with the rattlesnakes. What was that shack like? Talk about that home. Well, his home was, uh, we had quite a few, well, a few rounds a day, ain't many, but a lot of people. Well, part of the house was on the ground. You didn't have no floor in it. It was a dirt floor? A dirt floor. And in the back of it, it was rattlesnakes used to live back in the back. That part was on the ground, and I had to make peace with them, I had to feed them, to keep them out of the house, and I made Would you feed them? Well, we feed them crumbs or cornbread, stuff like that. We had little meat sometimes, throw it down to them, keep them out of the house. And, I, and the spirit came to me, told me what to do, to feed them, talk with them, told them to make peace with them, to come up in the house. Really? Mm -hmm. They never did see them up in the house long until we moved in 1988. So they had a <coughs> nest in there. Mm -hmm. It was a nest. Had a nest down there, down there where the floors on the you know, floors on the ground. Your mother would never go back there. Mm -hmm. Just you. Yeah.